Joining me now is Pennsylvania Congressman and member of the House Judiciary and Armed Services Committee, Guy Reschenthaler. Congressman, good to see you this morning. What can, the, what is the U.S.'s next step in taking on Iran and ending this hostility? Well, Dagan, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. When it comes to Iran, we got to look at just their actions. They're acting out because the Trump administration has been applying maximum pressure to Iran. So what they're, what they're doing is they're acting out. I think they're even trying to manipulate the cost of oil uh, because they know that the economic sanctions are hurting them and they need to make up for that somewhere. Congressman, good morning, Mitch Rochelle. Many of the military analysts who have been on this network and on the news channel have been talking about Iran potentially just punching themselves out that this is all they have and they're going to keep doing it until they just can't do it anymore. Uh, what's your reaction to that and whether or not this is going to continue or just be something that's short-lived? Right. Well, I think they're going to continue to act out because as the economic sanctions are hurting the Iranian economy, the regime is having a hard time staying in power. So they're really acting out. Um, they're trying to get attention, especially from the Europeans. So we have to make sure that we continue to apply maximum economic pressure, make sure the sanctions remain in place, and we have to make sure that our allies stay with us. Great Britain has done a great job. We have to make sure that the EU, especially France and Germany, stay with us, and we continue to amp up the pressure. The Trump administration has done an incredible job, and the Iranian regime is feeling the pain. I want to move on to digging deeper and investigating the investigators, something that will surely come up when former special counsel Robert Mueller testifies on Wednesday in the House. Judiciary Committee Chair Jerry Nadler slamming the president with new accusations ahead of the hearing, saying that the Mueller report presents, quote, very substantial evidence that the president is guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors. Maria Bartiromo sat down with Congressman Doug Collins, the ranking Republican on the Judiciary committee yesterday and he laid out his expectations for the testimony congressman listen to this and i'll get your reaction or what you're going to ask Mueller. so take okay. a listen what are you expecting from the Mueller testimony on wednesday well what we're expecting is an, another round of what we already know i've told some people before it's like going back and finding a book on the shelf that looks new and then all of a sudden you begin to read it and you find out wait i've already read this before this is the democrats time to make the case that they've not been wasting our time and millions of dollars in our committee hearings and clown and farce uh, hearings going on where they're just harassing the president going after things that we've already known and just trying to make press release headlines instead of legislating and trying to govern our country what else are the democrats trying to get out of robert Mueller, and what's the strategy on the Republican side. Well, I think the Democrats, what they're trying to do is, is revive this and make something of it that after being three months out in the public, everybody is, that is wanting to know about the Mueller report has looked into the Mueller report. We see that people are beginning to tire of this. The whole investigation started from the uh, discussion of Russian interference in our 2016 election. It's almost like they forgot about that completely. But let me tell you, the Republicans have not forgot about where this investigation started. Congressman, what are you going to ask Robert Mueller? Well, I'm a military man. I would never telegraph my next move. But, <laughs> but what I'm really interested in with Mueller is just the start of the investigation. I'm very troubled by the fact that the Obama administration weaponized the FBI and they used the FBI to spy on a political campaign. That's really troubling to me, and that should be troubling to every American. So I want to I want to focus on that, but I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to telegraph my next move. Right, and the fact that opposition research paid for by Donald Trump's opponent wound up being used to spy on a member of his campaign. The fact that that happened and that there weren't checks and balances in place to prevent that is astonishing to most Americans. And also, after Robert Mueller took over as the special counsel, at what point did he know, which Doug Collins has talked about, at what point did he know that there was no conspiracy with Russia. There was no collusion because the last FISA warrant was renewed in June of 2017. And so it was sometime between then and when the next renewal would happen in the fall. But then there was a, another year until the midterm election. So why did it take so long? Right, exactly. Mueller had over two years, literally millions of dollars, and he produced a 400-some page report. And I'll tell you, in the Navy, we talked bluff, bottom line up front. And here's the bottom line of that report. There's no obstruction. There's no collusion. 
Yet the Democrats are dragging Mueller to the Judiciary Committee for really just political theater. And they don't want the American people to know the far left agenda that they're undertaking right now in Congress. They don't want to talk about the Green New Deal. They don't want to talk about taking away private health insurance. So instead, they're bringing out Mueller and they're engaging in really political theater. I want to get to, well, speaking of theater, uh, and, uh, <laughs> the war of words continues. President Trump stepping up his attacks against the four Democratic Congresswomen, demanding that they apologize to America. He tweeted this yesterday morning. I don't believe the four Congresswomen are capable of loving our country. They should apologize to America and Israel for the horrible, hateful things they have said. They're destroying the Democrat Party, but are weak and insecure people who can never destroy our great nation. Before I go to you, Congressman, I'm going to let Lee Carter get in here. Again, the words that used to describe the, even the beginning of this, the racist, offensive, xenophobic. But there's, but again, he, the president seems to be trying to paint these women as the head of the Democratic yeah. Party. And there's a method to that going into the election next year. Yeah, I think that what started maybe as something that was pretty horrific has now turned into something different. So I think that what the president is trying to do is to define the party as these four women, which means that they are far left that they are very, very progressive, and that should be the Democrats' worst nightmare, because even the New York Times had an op-ed last week that said Donald Trump is going to win again if we go too far left, right? And so that, I think, is, is what he's trying to do. And now the Democrats are going to have to define themselves around that, and they're going to be reacting to Donald Trump rather than the other way around. So I think it's a very interesting strategy, and my question is, you know, to the congressman, do you see it that way? Do you think that the Democrat Party now is this party of, of the squad, of those four women that's very, very progressive, that's very far left, that has, uh, you know, very far left ideas on health care and, and other issues that are very important to the American people? I absolutely do. You know, I'm on the floor um, and I see how the Democrats are operating. I'm in committees and I see how much is controlled by the far left and, and the four freshmen uh, that get all the attention. But I can tell you that some want to paint them as just the squad. They're not the squad. They're the new Democrat Party. This is not your grandfather's Democrat Party. This is no longer the party of JFK. This is the party of AOC. And they've taken the Democrat Party to a very far left extreme position. Uh, just read the Green New Deal. They want to totally upend our economy. They want to move us to a social uh, socialist system. And uh, just read their own words. So this party has moved drastically left. Nancy Pelosi might be the speaker, but the real leaders are the four freshmen, the squad. They're the ones that are really leading this party, and they're pushing but, it in a drastic direction. But I will point this out, though. Before President Trump belly flopped into the, into the middle of what was an intra-party fight, where these four congresswomen were fighting with Nancy Pelosi, and they were figuratively eating each other alive. He belly flops into the middle of it. The Friday before this all started, the, enough Democrats joined you Republicans on it to block an amendment from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, blocked her amendment to a defense bill that would have banned President Trump from sending U.S. troops to the border. So it was actually the Democrats lining up with the Republicans, potentially in reaction to her. But now that's all over with, and you've now all the Democrats have locked arms with each other. Right. Well, we have to remember that we are still getting things done uh, as Republicans. We're moving forward in a, an agenda. And luckily, there's some moderate Democrats that have joined with us so we can overcome the far left agenda. But anybody that wants to minimize that the freshmen is just a squad of four, just look at every bill they put forward. The Green New Deal, last time I checked, had over 70 co-sponsors. Every time uh, AOC or someone from the squad uh, puts forth a bill or an, or an amendment, they usually have 90 or more co-sponsors. So they have really moved the party in a far left direction, and that should alarm all Americans. Thank you, Congressman. Good to see you. Guy Rushenthaler, take care. We'll be watching.